Well, hello, hello, and welcome to Coffee Craft with Anon Jr. This time with more bandwidth. <laughs> uh, we did end up figuring out what the problems were that we had last week with that, and they should be fixed. As much as I would love to continue blaming it on Time Warner, it was not their fault this time. But that is another subject for another day. Today, what I'd like to do is go over a couple of things that happened over the um, intervening week, the long weekend, some projects that got worked on, some stuff that got finished, and all that good fun stuff. Uh, Arcadius just logged on. Let me uh, get Discord fired back up. And Rayest should be joining us a little bit later. Um, if you were not able to watch last week's stream, you would probably like to know that we've got the major rail stations put in. And, uh, well, I got my loader unloader over here. Uh, <laughs> that means that I've actually got carts on hand. We're going to take a little ride so I can point out a couple things I got worked on. And we're going to take this route to Arcadius's place. Because one of the projects I worked on last week's stream and worked on a little bit more over the course of the weekend is terraforming this mountain over here. Um, you see the unfinished part over there, so that's the last side I've got to do. And then that whole end of the mountain will be integrated in with the rest of the naturally generated terrain. Uh, though I might reshape a little bit of that too. <laughs> but as we come there, we see that's the wall that's left to be done. And there we go. Look at that beautiful landscape as it comes around. Oop. Okay, maybe that wasn't the smartest way to take. All right, I need to go. Ah. <laughs> I need to put labels on the rail too. All right, let's head this way now. And there we go. There is what we worked on in the stream and a little bit over the course of the weekend. We got some actual hill floating in on that hill. Yeah, terrain looks a little rough. Uh, I'm probably going to have to go back through because I thought I was avoiding patterns. And you, you can clearly see some patterns forming over there. So I'll have to do that. Oh, and that took a little bit longer to explain than I expected. So let me hit this exit right over here and point out one of the things that Rayest was working on over this long weekend. <laughs> our giant aquarium. Reyes has been working on the main station over here. She got the build, big aquarium built up there. Lots of water, lots of time, lots of fish, and various and sundry other things. We also have our new counterman over here. Uh, hello. <laughs> and the station is coming along beautifully. I'm not sure she's gonna call it done. I'm not sure if any Rayest project is ever well and truly done, but um, it has definitely, definitely come a long way. And uh, I really do like the aquarium. Now, I do have the connected textures, which does make it look a little bit better uh, on the server using one of the things available in Vanilla Tweaks. We've got the clearer water, so it's easier to see what's going on in there. So if this looks a little bit different than what you were expecting, that is the likely culprits. And uh, other than the fact that the tropical fish seem to like uh, congregating in the corners and in little clusters in the schools, it's looking pretty nice. So that's one of the big things that we worked on over the weekend. And one of the big things that Reyest worked on over the weekend. One of the other ones was working with Arcadius on a project that I'm not sure he's ready to show off, so I'll just leave it at the cryptic. I was helping Arcadius with the project, and we made some progress on that. And the last little bit I'm going to show as we go towards where we're going to work today. Uh, as you guys may or may not know, we used to have an ice boat road going from our nether hub out to where the Guardian Farm was, well, is, and uh, we were running into some really weird issues with the ice boat roads, so we converted that to a powered rail. And uh, 
There we go. We load through. So now we got a powered rail. And one of the projects was putting an actual rail station there. So we got a nice little rail station over here instead of a, uh, a little chest with a bunch of carts over here. And go ahead, push yourself up the hill. Go for it. You can do it. We got a little rail station. This design is block for block. What Azuma Void had posted in one of his videos. I'll try to make sure I put a link in the description when I post this up to the YouTube channel. And it's a really neat design for single rail systems. We didn't end up using it in the hub because the hub is a dual rail system. And uh, I kind of like what we did there better. So we saddle up to the glass, hop in our cart, and away we go. And any minute now, we'll turn around and you'll see that I've been working on this tunnel here. I'm trying to give it a little bit more of a tube feel. So I've got some stairs up in the corners on either side. Uh, we've got tons of stone and andersite, so I used stone and andersite for the stairs. Not, not for any particular aesthetic reason, but because... We, we, we have more than we know what to do with. We got a lot. Have I mentioned that we got a lot? We've got a lot. So uh, that, that, that's what we're using for this particular project is we got stone and andersite stairs running down the sides. I'm going to get one more going down this corner here. And a little bit further down, you'll see where I've started working on the rest of the design. Any minute now. Oh, there it is. Off in the distance. Yeah, there's the beginning of our next corner, and drum roll, please. We've got some smooth stone over here on the sides, because it kind of fits. And we've got some nether brick and red nether brick slabs up near the top with some sea lanterns for lighting. Um, I've been trying to go for an irregularly spaced look, just kind of patches and strips to, to give it a, a bit more of a worn effect. I it works better for the stone and andersite stairs than it does for the nether brick and red nether brick. So I'm, I might come back and make a, an actual uh, deliberate pattern out of that instead of the uh, irregular regularity that's going on right now. Um, but we'll see. I might leave it. I, I'll, I'll let it see how, it, if it goes, how it goes. And boop, there we go. We're off the rail. And we got our nice little exit over here so we don't accidentally hit that pressure plate and send all of them, especially when you're working on stairs and lights. It'd be a real shame if you sent all the carts down the other end of the rail system by accidentally hitting the pressure plate multiple times working on a project. <coughs> oh. Oh. Oh, hello. We, we appear to have a crowd on the island. Are we going to play Survivor? Yeah, I'm not voting any of y'all off the island. I, I don't need that kind of anger when I head back that way. <laughs> Alright, so this is where we're going to spend today. Or at least a portion of today, depending on how things go. If you remember from streams past, Arcadius has been working on his little uh, mob spawner over here off by the Guardian Farm. We did some of the redstone work up here on a previous stream, and it took a couple of tries to get it to work quite right. Uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll revisit this again because uh, apparently this wasn't the layer it was supposed to go on. So we're, we're going to put a couple more layers and then move the redstone up at some indeterminate point. And you'll notice that most of these have trap doors. That is so that way the only things that will spawn on most of these platforms will be creepers and the occasional spider because mostly we want the creepers and the sugarcane farm in that empty space underneath it should give you a clue as to uh, why this is such a project we're keen to get finished because who doesn't love more rockets all right so let's get a few things out my temporary work platform I didn't realize I grabbed a bowl. Oh, no, there we go. All right. I've got more I'm going to toss down in just a second. So here is the conundrum that we're putting together today. So we've got all these mobs that are going to be dropping down here. For most of the mobs, 
it is enough of a fall that it should kill them outright. Uh, the creepers particularly, the spiders we're mostly sure of. But as you can see, we do have one or two platforms that do not have the trapdoors because we do want a little bit of the other stuff that comes along with it. That means that we might get some skeletons with armor, some zombies with armor, and they will not die from the fall. If any witches spawn up there on those platforms, they are highly likely to not die from the fall. So we need two, two things. We need a field of magma cubes, which would be... Ah, oh, it's one of the things I forgot back at, back at the base. Was I smart enough to leave it in the ender chest? No, I was not smart enough to leave it in the ender chest. All right, we might be making a trip back to the base, but that, that won't be for a little bit. So we're going to have a field of magma cubes to burn up anything that doesn't die from fall damage. And we want some sort of collection system underneath it. Originally, the idea was to throw a lot of hoppers. A lot of hoppers, a field of hoppers, a forest of hoppers, and have them all drop down to a box or two down that way. Problem is, a an array of hoppers that big causes all sorts of laggy fun time. Well, unfun, depending on which side of the lag you're on. And um, so we're going to put together a minecart rail system. That's why we got the redstone blocks down the middle here. That's going to help power the rail. I got my box of assorted rails and rail equipment. All the rail you could want for a project like this. Except I'll probably want more. <laughs> and the question facing us tonight is what to do for the collection system. I've done a couple different collection systems here so far on the server, but nothing quite like this. Most of them, it, it's been critters dropping into a fairly constrained space. Uh, like if we were to go back to my, to my base, we would see that in the mob spawner that I've got going there, the more general purpose mob spawner, um, it's a small 2x2 two two pit with a couple of hopper mine carts crammed into the same block as the magma cubes and that helps cut down on actually it doesn't help with the lag at all but it it's only four of them so it's not that big a deal um we got a little mini hopper mine cart system going on the melon pumpkin farm where there's two hopper mine carts just going back to back and forth, back and forth, underneath the entirety of the Mill and Pumpkin Farm. And uh, we've got like two hoppers and a hopper minecart running for the sugarcane farm uh, in my base. So what I'm thinking is I'd like to do... Sorry, I was going to mark out the edges of that and I was going to use sand to do that, but... Um, I think I forgot that too. Uh, <laughs> power apart. Oh, maybe it's in the random project box. That's not what I wanted. Yep. Yeah. Oh, no. That's a single block of sand. That's so that way I can set up another station when we get a chance to uh, work on the desert temple. Um. Well then, considering that that's multiple items that have all been forgotten at the base, let's head back there and I'll talk a little bit more about the conundrum while we travel. So, I want a hopper minecart system to run across there. Either a single hopper minecart, maybe two. I, yeah, that's it. Keep going that way. Alright, um, yeah. I should probably put a light in here somewhere too. So that way I know if the uh, pigmen have emptied my system. Okay. Nope. Oh, come on. Into there. There we go. Alright. So um, either one or two hopper minecarts running uh, down the rail system. Two hopper minecarts will help pick everything up before they have a chance to despawn, but they also run into the problem of um, 
they're highly likely to bump into each other and possibly cause problems. I've seen a couple of the hermits on Hermitcraft and a few other YouTubers running into really weird issues where two hopper minecarts do some weird stuff when they run on parallel rails or rails next to each other. And I don't want to have to keep busting into the system to tear up uh, the collection system to just to push a minecart to get it going again. So, for that reason, I'm tempted to do a single minecart system. Potentially. <laughs> and so that, that, that's part of the question. Um, I'm not sure where I want to stick the boxes, which will help with figuring out the unloading system. Where I want to put that and how I want to set that up. Do I want to have them tucked in a corner somewhere? Do I want to have them under the water or at the water's edge? I've got a couple of different ideas and, and thoughts about how I want to do that. And I'll hit those up again when I, when I get back to uh, that end of things. Um, and part of the problem is, I, I don't know if you noticed the title, but um, the, the title was Moderately Competent Redstone. <laughs> By moderately competent redstone, that is not a self-depreciating knock. That is not... Uh, I'm actually using uh, competency in its more technical term in learning circles. Uh, if, you, if you've read any of the articles on my website, anonjunior.com, you'll know that I used to work for a hospital in the education department did a lot of work with the online education uh, building the system doing the software running online training and a whole host of other stuff in that area um, you know let's take a little stack actually you know what let's just take a box <laughs> and uh one uh one of the models of skill acquisition is the it's the Dreyfus model of skill acquisition. It's something that has its roots in healthcare training and sometimes has made its way into other areas, but not always. In trying to figure out what I want to do with this channel, what I want to do with streaming, what I want to do as well. Quite frankly, my my second career, third career, depending on how you want to count. Um, I want to try to hit some of the middle areas of the Dreyfus model that aren't, or at least don't appear to be adequately served by the current uh, Crawford tutorials you find floating around. So, for context, when we're talking the Dreyfus model of skill acquisition, uh, the idea is that you go through five phases when learning a skill. And this is usually per skill. So you are you can be a novice in one thing, an expert in something else, and somewhere in the middle on a third thing. Because this is a, a per skill assessment. Uh, you start as a novice, you then progress to advanced beginner, you progress to competent, and then from there you move to proficient, and then finally to expert. These are five well-defined areas. And unfortunately, some of the terms are kind of overloaded outside of the academic circles. Like when I say expert, uh, you've probably got a different idea than what I mean when I use the term in its more professional sense. And <laughs> same thing with competent. Like when I say moderately competent, I, I mean uh, I'm finally starting to cross the chasm from advanced beginner to competent. And, and maybe maybe even edging towards proficient in certain circumstances. Um, <laughs> that almost sounds like the new villager mechanic. What? Moderately competent? <laughs> the scale. Starting beginner oh, and then German. Yeah, and, yeah, and uh, there is a reason for that, too. Uh, the There's always been the... We, we understand... what What is hurting me when I come through the portal. All right. Um, 
we understand the basic idea that you progress as you go. It was the Dreyfus brothers that kind of put a formal formal definition to that growth and milestones to look for. Like, uh, you, when you're at the novice level, you are very recipe-driven. You're very hardline, rule-driven, zero context on those rules. So it, it's the, in the Minecraft world, that those are your basic block-for-block block tutorials. Like, you need a 5x7 square, and starting in the second block left, in your 5 by 7 square, put this here. Then put this here, put this here, put this here. It's very recipe driven, so as long as you've got that space and that setup that was done in that tutorial, you're good, you're golden. There, there's a ton of tutorials out there for that, and if that's what you're looking for, if that's what you need, there's nothing wrong with that. It is perfectly acceptable to, to be at that novice level because everybody you're watching, guess what? They started there too. And if you if you're fine living there, that's fine too. Don't don't hear novice and think it, think of it as a um, derogatory term or some sort of pejorative because it's not. It, it is very much just a thing. We're we're, we're all there. For one because reason or another, society thing that's made that a bad term. Yeah, very much so. Um, all right, I'm trying to get my outer bounding box of this. So, the novice is, is that very recipe driven. I need the clear, unambiguous steps. In the professional world, we also think of it in terms of like your call centers. You know, you got that guy that's following the tree, where you know. Oh, it's not working. Is, is it plugged in? Is it turned on? And going down that level of... Okay, step by step, I can follow the this particular recipe. Uh, or, you know, put the chicken in the oven. Turn the oven to 360 degrees. Uh, and follow that. At that advanced beginner role, you're moving a little bit beyond the recipe and you can start taking some more context dependent rules. You're still very rule driven, but you can now apply contextually important rules. Like as long as you're not near water, do this. Or if you have these conditions, do that. Oh, okay, I already made my way around, good. Um, so you start working at that level now where you can begin applying context to it. You're still not at a stage where you can troubleshoot, but you can definitely take um, more intricate instruction. Okay. And then um, it's when you get to that competent level, that's where you can begin troubleshooting. It's where you can begin self-correcting. You have enough information to to move beyond just the recipe. And that's where I sit with a lot of the redstone stuff. So, some of it, I'm, I'm actually at the proficient stage where you can begin uh, the construction of novel devices, things that you haven't seen before. And with some of the simpler stuff like the uh, sugarcane farm that we got up there. That is a novel construction. I've not seen anybody build that particular farm, but I've seen enough sugarcane farms that I can now go, okay, what are the things that I need? How does it work? And I want to help people make that bridge from novice to advanced beginner to competent and hopefully up to proficient by providing them the skills and direction they need to make that growth, if they so choose. Um, but because I am not uniformly adept at that throughout the whole <laughs> spectrum of redstone stuff, uh, that for what we're trying to do tonight, I, I'd probably put myself somewhere moderately competent. I've seen collection systems, I've built a couple of collection systems, 
and now I'm trying to figure out how to apply the collection systems that I've seen to what we're doing here. And that would be the conundrum now, wouldn't it? So, I know the footprint of what we've got up there. I've, I know that on the level of stone, I'm going to be running a rail back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And I'm really thinking of putting it so that way we've got an unloading station where this lamp is in the corner here. And then maybe put some boxes into the wall. Hmm. Most of the mobs are not going to get pushed too far out this line. Since they're, they're being propelled by water flow off the edge, they're likely to fall here, here, and maybe out as far as this lamp here. Um, they're not going to get pushed too far out from there. So I've got a little bit of room to work with in this corner here. On the flip side, though, we, we've got the sugar cane that is almost certainly going to be pushed to the edges. However, I don't think any is liable to end up in this corner. If anything, is going to end up along this edge here, probably no more than a block or two out from where it is at. So I've probably got from about here over. I know that one of the requirements that we definitely have for this is we want to do some basic sorting. Because uh, our two primary goals are sugarcane and gunpowder. And I want to make sure that the sugarcane and gunpowder get sorted out into their own storage silos so we can come here and quickly grab those items. Uh, the string and spider eyes and anything else that happens to come out of this, I'm pretty sure we can safely just toss into a third column because, well, we're happy to have them. That's not our primary goal. That sound about right? Uh, uh, yeah. Third column, bucket of lava, you know, whatever. Oh, you know me. I don't like throwing stuff away. It could be useful. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that's why I have overflowing bins of all sorts of stuff back here. As be happy if, it's uh, not on camera. really need this string. There's a spider farm not, what, 100 blocks from where you're standing? Yeah. And we're probably not going to get too much of the other things. We might we might get some arrows from the occasional skeleton that spawns on that bottom platform. Um, yeah, because my infinity bow uses a lot of those. Yeah, not all of <laughs> us are using the infinity though. And, hey, uh, and uh, I, it's not my fault you're in the 19th century over there. I, I well, I like mending I like more than I like infinity. That's a really good argument, and uh, if you want to get into that, we can. <laughs> uh, but I will defend my infinity to the to the dying bird. Oh no no no! Don't don't hear it. I'm not saying it has its place. Like when we go when we go end busting, I totally load up the infinity bow because I am not grabbing 18 stacks of arrows to go end busting. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, yeah, no, don't, don't hear what I'm not saying. I've got that joker for special occasions. Um, <laughs> but where, so, where's, where's so, you, so you admit that it's a uh, special occasion bow. So it's better than the uh, yep. ending bow. There it is, right there. To infinity. That's the joker I take out when we go end busting or <laughs> where I know we're going to be traveling and doing a lot of fighting. <laughs> um, power four, infinity, punch, unbreaking, flame. Absolutely. Uh, well, that's what I was missing. I'm sitting here looking at my own bow while you're reading it off. I was like, no, oh, punch is what I don't have. Yeah, I I get a little waffly on punch and knockback and that sort of thing. But I can't stand it on my sword. You can keep yeah, that. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah, I definitely don't have it on sarcasm. On the original sword, wit, I had it, and it was nice in the beginning. When, when I didn't have the armor to handle the mobs. The mobs of mobs. But, um... Now, now that I'm trying to hunt some... F 
some fools down for stuff, uh, knockback is not all that helpful. And that means my loot and XP is going away from me. And I don't like chasing them down. <laughs> <laughs> I already had to fight you to get yeah. I don't have to run after it, too. Yeah, I... I like the laziest murder hobo ever. <laughs> absolutely. I already had to beat you down. I don't want to go run after your stuff. <laughs> and, uh... Yeah. So I'm thinking that we could probably set it up so we've got a stack of boxes here, a stack of boxes here, and a stack of boxes here. If I remember correctly, spiders, when they fall, like when they're pushed off of something by a water stream or what have it, they can't initiate a climb until they hit the bottom, right? Um, I don't think so but it's not a problem with your current design because there there's nothing for them to climb onto with where they get pushed off well that's what i was thinking because the old farms always push them to a center column and it drops them yeah and, and then you get to worry about there. the spiders clogging stuff up because they grab True, a hold right. of the wall on the way down yeah but i was curious if they can even do that or if it's just they didn't die from the fall but because i was wondering to prevent certain drops from going inward and make the collection area smaller maybe we could build walls up to the bottom floor uh, along yeah. the diamond interior yeah I thought about that too um, and then you could funnel everything into the middle and you'd have that huge chamber in the middle to do like a giant collection silo yeah I thought about that too uh, that was one of the ideas that I was tossing around because we we could we could either have like a underwater tunnel to pop up in the middle, um, or something like that. I don't think anything's going to drift. We know the sugar cane's not going to drift inward. Matter of fact, there goes some of it off into the distance now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like the, the the slime blocks do do launch that stuff pretty uh pretty hardcore out into the distance so i'll be happy when the walls come up and i'm assuming the walls will come up over here on this prismarine border um i haven't actually figured out where it's going but that seems like a good enough place as any yeah because that that gives you that gives you enough space to it gets a little dicey on this edge here because that's only a one block gap for stuff to get pushed down if we put the wall right there um, so the only thing you would have to worry about would be spiders coming off this side and not going down the uh, going down the one block gap is it like that on all corners be because of the way the diamond set up yes okay I was just making sure I didn't have my diamond off center yeah, no, no, no. Okay. Hmm. Do I need to extend that ground platform out by one? Uh that is that is one of the one of the questions for today. I mean, um, I'm tempted to say so. Oh, you're the redstone guy. You tell me. Yeah. I mean, really, the biggest problem you got to worry about is a spider getting pushed off that corner and latching on instead of falling, and then possibly getting stuck there and never actually dying. Well, in that case, and hitting up it the mob would seem that we're, uh, But honestly, we're, we're to wondering to, if it goes off of my luck or yours at that point. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah. not go there. Um, <laughs> But the, the, we would definitely need to move it more than a block out if we really wanted a hardcore worry about that. We would want to move this out maybe two or three blocks on all sides, which is going to vastly... reach that far? I didn't think their pathfinder was smart enough to like actively jump well, for a wall. Uh, their pathfinding is smart enough to actively jump for a wall, and even if it wasn't, there's enough space for them as they're falling to have drifted over to a wall and grab hold. 
can then either climb up or stay where they're at. And the more spiders that collect on the walls, the the lower the mob cap. Or the quicker you reach the mob cap, so the less less things get pushed off. Hmm. Yeah. Smart spiders. Don't tell Rest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. I just, I don't know, I'm not sure how big a gap we would need to make that happen. Uh, and again, that that's all predicated on them getting pushed off that corner edge there too. If they get pushed off of here, they're, they're dead. There's nothing, there's nothing for it. They're dead. Uh, so the other option would be to put the wall in one. So they always got pushed off an edge, but even still where we're at, uh, they're not going to fit down that one black hole anyway. So they're going to get pushed over here maybe. Um, and if they don't die, they can always crawl back up under the topmost platform. That's part of why you see in um, Tango Tex giant uh, version of this. You know, it's four column one. He, he's got it open air. So that way there's no wall for the spiders to grab hold of. They get pushed off and that's it. Um, Is that where I got this idea from? That's what I was thinking. I honestly, yeah. I, I thought I had seen it somewhere, but I was doing that from like memory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I wasn't sure where I'd seen it from. I was just copying something I'd seen before. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no. Tang Tango Tech had uh, four columns feeding into a giant collection system. He was Ooh, using. Uh, uh, was he using water streams? I don't remember now. It's been so long. But what I could definitely do is on the sugarcane farms, I could put some glass uh, one block out. That way it's far enough to stop the sugarcane from getting propelled way out into the distance. But not so far out that it interrupts the fall of mobs. So, um... Where... We've got scaffolding around here somewhere. Yeah, maybe it's in this one. I think there's some at the uh, temple base if you need some. Oh, hey, a convenient marker of exactly where I need to be. <laughs> Almost like it was put there intentionally. Is that high enough? Find out in a minute. It's killing me watching the sugar cane get propelled off into the distance. Um, although I don't have any glass. Do you, do you have any glass over in your uh, boxes over there? Uh, you would ask me a hard question, wouldn't you? Um, there might be a little. If nothing okay. else, I can bring you some. Yeah, bring, bring me about a half stack of glass. that going up a little bit more. This. Oh yeah. <laughs> that's more than I wanted, but that's easier to work with. Because we could definitely leave this open air too. And then that solves a lot of that trouble. Just pop some glass up there. Where was that one? Hmm? You said that solves a lot of the trouble. I'm trying to figure out which trouble we're talking about. Uh, everything we were just talking about with the spiders climbing up walls, because if there's no oh, walls to okay, climb up, gotcha. then, you know. Gotcha, okay. <laughs> but I don't close it in, then yeah. Yeah, so if we don't close it in, it's not a problem. Can it still function in daytime if I don't close it? It will, um, if you put a canopy over the top, that extends uh, some number of blocks out. So wherever we designate the top layer, extend that canopy out. Um, 
at least another five because what you want is you want it so that way the overhang shadows the lower layers enough that the light can't can't get in <laughs> okay so it doesn't matter if it's day or night it's still dark enough under there that you have the conditions for mob spawning uh, you might have some trouble with these lanterns down here but probably not because they are under that platform there um Actually, it's almost dark enough that we could test that anyway. That's a good thing you said something, because I was about to sleep again. <laughs> so, I want to go up another few more. Why am I going the oh, fast way? I know that there's a way that you're supposed to be able to add... That's more than enough. Hey, I wonder how that ended up in the middle there. Oh, because it probably hit the scaffolding. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So it is now nighttime. Let's see. Let's see what the light levels are on the platform and hope we don't find out the hard way. So, oh yeah, five, six. Yeah, we get a seven up on some of the corners, but uh, is it seven or under seven? I think it's six and below that you start yeah. having to worry about. So you get a couple of slabs here and there that you run into a problem with, but uh. The bulk of the platform is open and available. So, so yeah, that that would definitely be that would definitely be doable to leave it open. And we just put a glass barrier to keep the sugar cane from getting pushed. Way out that away. Okay, now we can sleep. <laughs> and that is the bottommost one, the one closest to the sugarcane farm, and therefore most likely to hit it. Um, the ones further up should have even less trouble, especially once you get the uh, canopy over the top. Alright, which brings us back to storage. And I mean, and the other thing I thought of is bringing it out to this platform here. So you got a, a little platform that uh, we could have an unloading system maybe over here and then put it into a column of boxes around the spot. That thought also crossed my mind. Which would also get them out of the falling space, but then again, they're not they're not gonna get pushed that far off, so they're probably not worth Yeah. Probably not worth worrying about. Okay. So I just need a uh an unloading station. Glass blocks or panes? Um either. Uh, pains would bring, pains would probably be more resource efficient. I have both. I'm just trying to figure out which one you want. Yeah, bring the pains. That way it'll be a little less obtrusive. I've been curious how much sugar cane that thing's actually been producing too. A little bit bigger than the one that I have in my base, which is definitely a slow trickle. It's one of those ones that you kind of forget about, forget about, forget about, and then you get more than you know what to do with. And then you go use it to unlock some villagers and uh, wish you had more for a while until you forget about it and 
repeat the cycle. <laughs> All right. Seems familiar. Yeah, a little bit. All right. Uh... Let's see. If I were to do it that way, that part doesn't take up a whole lot of room. Although, I am also tempted to go Oop, the other way. It's an interesting build on the nether tunnel. You like that? Yeah. I thought you were doing something with the other nether tunnel, the one going off to the uh, fortress. I didn't realize this was the one you were playing yeah. with. Yeah. Yeah. Looks pretty nice. Well, half of it looks nice. The part that's done. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay. So this is what it's supposed to look like. Yeah, that that's what it's gonna look like when it's finished. Oh no! Nice. Okay, so that's where the red nether brick was coming in. You were talking about the other day. Yep. Yeah. And, and I'm yeah. only using slabs because I'm a cheapskate. <laughs> it's only it's only supposed to decorate the ceiling. <laughs> I I thought about making them top slabs so that the uh, the lanterns popped out a little bit more. The, the problem was that with the... It just you didn't work right with the top slabs. Because I'm trying to go for a little bit more of a round subway tube kind of feel. And You uh, got it. That's nice. And that works a little bit better that way. I'm guessing you use the red nether brick to copy the ground. Is that what that was for? Um, no, no. Uh, I just want it in patches to make it feel like it's got some worn spots and that sort of thing. Okay. Ah, uh, okay, I see. Because you've got some rather... I can't speak today. Regular nether brick mixed in here. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and that's two different types of stairs, too. Yep. Yep, some stone and andersite. Try to give it a little bit of a roughed up, used look. Good job. Now, you, I couldn't tell it when I was moving down the tracks. So. <laughs> nah. I came to a stop and I was like, oh, hey, there's uh, stuff here. Oh, wait, no, I did that wrong. Uh, I want to go and... Do I want the lamp on this side? No, I... Oh, wait, no, 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 never mind. I don't want to do that. I was going to try to build something with status lights. Cause I, I've been watching, uh, you know, the 50 things videos and that sort of looking at different tutorials to get an idea for, for how things are getting done. And I thought about building storage with status lights so you can see which boxes are full and which boxes aren't. But then I realized that lights kind of defeat the purpose of, you know, mob spawners. <laughs> yeah. I do <don't>. uh, <laughs> That seems a little less than intuitive. But on the other hand, if the if these lights down here aren't impacting it up there, or for that matter, if those lights up there aren't impacting it up there, then then it probably wouldn't be a problem. Mm. Probably not. I mean, yeah, no. Let, let's go ahead. Fifteen blocks away, it yeah. should be yeah. completely negligible at that point. Light. Light. But that's the other thing that I wanted to check was the spacing. See, now we're encroaching a little bit too close to that edge. Yeah. Much as I want to do... Well, I wonder. I wonder if I could work that same redstone and then put a status light... So all we're doing is taking a comparator off the hopper. Off the hopper? Off the box. 
You know, I'll save the status list for another project. <laughs> I hear you over in the corner, but I do not hear you on Discord. I hear you through your stream. I don't actually hear you on Discord, so... Really? <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm on Discord. Uh... Nope. Hello? There we go. I hear you. I hear Ray asked. Hey, we have sound. Yep. Do you do you hear me on the return on Discord? I do. Okay. All right. Okay. So continue with your blah 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 redstone. Blah 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 redstone. It is. <laughs> it's all I hear when you say it. <laughs> well, come on. It's not that bad. Redstone is. No, it's not. I like the end result of redstone. All right. Uh, hmm. How many boxes do we want? Because I tried just three boxes? boxes high. Huh? What kind of boxes? Uh, double chests for storage. We tried the three double chests over at the uh, Guardian Farm, and that was highly inadequate for the way that we're working over there. Um... We want seven. Ooh. And the filtering's gonna go out another... Let's see, we got the hopper train. One, two, three. All right, um, uh, hmm. Now the redstone's edging up on that. Yeah. And that's why you measure it out before you build. <laughs> what is it about cutting twice and measuring once? Yeah, yeah. Something like that. Yeah, I think I'm definitely going to build this out on the platform over here then. Are you building another monster thing? Mm-hmm. Where is it? It's over by the Guardian Farm. Over by the Angry oh. Fish. <sighs> okay. I gotta move my uh, workstation and all that. I don't go over there. <laughs> I know you don't. It's okay. The rockets will make their way back this way. Or, you know what I mean. Uh, Alright, let me just set that down right there for now. Oh! <laughs> Hi, guys. <laughs> oh! Getting some drops already, huh? Yeah. And one of them fell on the inside of the circle. Glad I saw that. Um, I'm not taking any shortcuts on the collection end of this endeavor. <laughs> nope. Not this time. Alright, let me get this stuff up. Yeah, a couple of spiders fell. Alright, so... I could probably even get away with putting it the block in front. No, because if I put it the block in front, when the slime blocks push out, they're going to hit the glass and try to retract them, so, <laughs> which would be counterproductive. I know what you should make later. Uh-oh. Yeah, that was a... <laughs> that what? Was, that was a dangerous, so... Uh... In in your burning furnace, whatever thing you're going to make, um... 
burning furnace whatever thing. <laughs> yeah, you talked about it before. There, there was redstone involved. Again, all I hear, once once redstone gets brought up, I hear blah, 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 redstone. Ooh, I get to make it pretty. Um, <laughs> that's funny. That's but it was what a... I hear most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Can't tell who the redstone person here is. No. Yeah. Not at all. Yeah. Uh, you were talking about building a big thing under a big forge furnace something system. Can oh, you do yeah, one of those the, things the, where the we get XP when we pull thing. stuff out of it? Yeah. Ooh. Can we get XP when we take stuff out of it? That is a wonderful question. I'll have to get back to you on that one. Okay. Because I'm sitting here trying to save my axe from the little red stripe of death. Oh, that's why you go to the, the zombie farm or the spider farm. I'm at or, the zombie I don't farm. Know, it takes forever out for here the by the guardian farm. No, I do not talk to the evil fishies. <laughs> <laughs> what is the but fish they have the XP. Yes, they have all the XP and then they kill me and I lose the XP. <laughs> oh. Okay. Another day. So I don't want that one right in front. I want to go... That's even with the slime blocks. Maybe four. That's for the top level of sugar cane. Two... Four. That should be for the bottom level. Except I forgot that last guy over there. Alright, so that should take care of them, right? Because that's one, two, three blocks down. Yeah. Okay. Actually, I kind of like that with the connected texture. You can barely see that there's glass there. Speaking of, did you put that on the server? Uh, no, I did not. I forgot about that this weekend. Sadness. Yeah. Remind me about that next weekend. Because it's definitely something that I'm going to have to take the server down to add. Or, well, I'll have to restart it at least. I don't necessarily have to take it down. <laughs> Thanks. I try. If you want, I can, like, screenshot that and, like, text you the screenshot. Seriously. All the helpful. Actually, if you want, I can really kill you, and I can take a picture of it with my phone. No. <laughs> no. should be the last one, right? Yep. Okay. Uh, 
Oh, Arcades, you'll enjoy this one. On uh, one of the recent episodes of Daily Tech News Show, mm -hmm. they were going they were. over this n really neat new software bit. Um, that's not... Sorry, I'm having a little trouble with my... Uh, there we go. That's, no, that's not the way I want to go. There we go. Um, there's a company developing... Uh, oh, bother. I'm having trouble explaining this. <laughs> and uh, <yeah. laughs> Okay. Anyway, uh, they they figured out an algorithm for AIs to listen and tell if a patient is experiencing agonal respirations. With 96% accuracy and zero false negatives. Now the problem is the threshold for medical equipment is a little bit higher than, than 96%, so they still got work to do. But uh, yeah, they they you could actually program into like you know uh, Google Home or. Amazon Alexa or uh, pretty much any AI system to listen and tell if somebody is going into agonal respirations. The The problem was on the show, they were saying, yeah, it'd be kind of cool if you could ask Alexa if you're going into agonal respirations. Uh, for those of you who don't know who are listening to this stream, if you can ask your voice assistant if you're experiencing agonal respirations, you're not. Oh, go ahead, tell me I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah. Actually, just a lot smarter than I would expect a, uh, a tech podcast to be about medical stuff. Well, and again, that's not their that's not their bailiwick. So they're they're looking at the at that end of things and. Maybe I missed it. Okay. Uh, sorry, getting distracted by stuff again. Um, yeah, so I, I don't really fault them for that one because, again, it's not medical technology is not their jam, not their regular jam anyway. And uh, so I can't really give them too much flack over that. Um I do. I do also like their. The other thing they were thinking of is if you can detect that, maybe you can start detecting things like uh, anxiety attacks or stuff along that nature. Uh, so the idea <laughs> so, yeah. of being able to ask, you know, a virtual assistant who I will not name and trigger on everybody listening to this, uh, <laughs> am I experiencing an anxiety attack? being able to branch out into those sorts of things. Which has potential, but again, that's that's different than uh, uh, agonal respiration seem, at least to my mind, to be a little bit more of a straightforward problem. And... The type of anxiety attack and how they come on, I mean, I would think that that'd be a little harder to pinpoint, you know, yeah. a virtual assistant, is this what's happening, you know? Yeah. They have dogs that have to go through, you know, yeah, lots <laughs> decades of, of training before they can figure that one out, so... <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's not what like, it's not like the, the advancement is completely useless, too, because we already use Connect-like devices to tell if a patient at high risk for falls has left the bed so you can get True, one yeah, nursing one yeah so you can get one nursing assistant to monitor five or six patients and and you know in a resource constrained healthcare environment which is a little redundant um yeah you you can definitely uh i could definitely 
see some poor soul monitoring, you know, a bunch of uh, respiratory patients or patients with uh, high risk for that sort of thing. Using the, I fell off the edge. Uh, Does a stone cutter work on prismarine blocks? Yes. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, mo most of the stuff you're carving that stuff out of is either stone or wood, and there's no wood equivalent of a stone cutter yet. I have a funny feeling that, that is coming. Would give you that idea. Uh, there were a couple of crafting blocks that were not yet implemented at the time of 1.14's release. And I want to say one of them Casting sounded like summer. it was going to be a... Huh? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, I understand. We even have some of them in-game now that we can actually make, but they don't do anything right now. Yeah. Other than be workstations for... Yeah, I was going to say, it's not so much that they don't do anything. They, they're just, you know, workstations. They have no functionality for our side, which... Yeah. I think that that's going to change uh, probably as soon as... Uh, Point five, I think, is what uh, I heard one um, of the Uber say. I don't know that there's going to be a point five. I know there's going to be a point four, but I think uh, I deeply suspect that one, two, three. That um, once one dot fourteen point four is out the focus is going to end up being on uh, 1.15. Already? Yeah, there, there's already some... Yeah. Quick turnaround. Any idea what uh, 15 is going to focus on? Nope. Not at this particular juncture. Because it seems like they were kind of caught by surprise on how many problems 1.14 had on its release. And that's why I do I do wonder about the the push for the push for more. Yeah, I'm, um, I'm starting to wonder. Uh, like, like I I understand that you want to have a nice, quick, rapid turnaround kind of dealio going, but on the other hand, that's that's how we run into buggy releases with you know weird villager issues and pillager loops and <laughs> other problems. <laughs> Grab some more stairs. I should have no. I thought I had some on me. Okay. see how that goes. I know they're, they're already looking at taking votes on which biome is going to be the focus of major updates and that sort of thing. Well, that's what I was curious about. If I know the next major thing they want to do is combat, but I don't think that that was going to be in its own release. That was supposed it to be a, a... It wouldn't surprise bomb. me. It wouldn't surprise me if that ended up in its own release. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me, but the way they were talking about it at uh, most recent con made it sound like it was going to be own, and frankly, pretty soon you can already technically play test it, just not through the normal means. Yeah, yeah, yeah you can you can play test the combat updates that they're talking about. I know there, <laughs> I know there's some uh, poor unfortunate uh, diehards of the 1.8 combat combat style that I hear them I understand them 
But seriously, guys, just let it go. <laughs> right, just please, just let it go. It's done. It's over. That time is gone. <laughs> I don't know. I kind of like some of the aspects they're bringing in. Specifically, the uh, the reach ability that they're going to be putting on some of the weapons. Yeah, I tools. do. I do like that. Although in the um, update, it looks like there is a small problem where there was some code that would prevent you from accidentally hitting zombie pigmen when you're mining with a pickaxe. Mm -hmm. And that appears to be uh, missing. <laughs> Let's be able to do what you're going to need to do with the, the new update. That's kind of what's going to end up having to happen. You're going to lose that functionality. But I think it was only the hoe and the shovel that had the extended range or the quote unquote reach ability. Yeah. I really feel like I'm starting to talk about D&D &D over here, but... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, what, with uh, reach and all that? Yeah. yeah. yeah that, no, I'm, that, that I'm was... sorry, your polearm doesn't have reach. I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Well, in that case, uh, at the campaign, please let me know what the damage output of a hoe is, because I, w I would love to have a <laughs> Warforged fighter beating people with a hoe. <laughs> <laughs> is it a diamond hoe? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, no, not, not at first level. You're not getting a diamond hoe at first level. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. You can have a golden hoe, but it's going to break the third time you hit someone with it. No. No. <laughs> Isn't that how gold equipment works? I mean, <laughs> that's what it feels like how it works. I mean, I mostly Excellent. use it for decoration now. Oh, uh. Forget who it was. I want to say it was. Pixel Rifts, maybe? I don't know. I was trolling around through some Instagram stuff, and someone had a photo that gave out a stack of stone with a item frame on it, and in the item frame it had the pickaxe, and it was showing how much stone each pickaxe would mine, and you had this, like extremely small stack and it was a golden pickaxe and then you had a wooden pickaxe and then the stone then an iron and then the diamond and the integral steps between each pickaxe was phenomenally hilarious because you went from gold which had like nothing to a wood which had almost double what the gold had and then you had your stone and then, or uh yeah your stone and then your iron had had decent step you know between them and then you had this like ginormous jump to where the diamond was <laughs> it was an interesting yeah. photo to see sorry I had to go look at the uh, item sorter <laughs> oh. to remind myself how the, how the thing went together <laughs> alright so the filter is going to go there so the block goes at the top one Okay. Okay. I think I can remember that. I can't remember that, but that's okay. Um. Yeah. So I, I don't know. We'll, we'll we'll see how the combat goes. It does it does sound like they are listening to feedback though, which is an encouraging sign too. Because uh, there's already been a response to some of the feedback that DocM and a few others have been able to put together. True enough. If there, nothing there. else, you, you can't say that the uh, development team is uh, slouching. They're, they're definitely there. They're definitely listening. They're definitely how, listening. How to well they listen, that's a <laughs> completely different matter. Not nighttime yet? The sun is going down. I'm feeling tired. Bed's right there. Oh, come on. You can't let me lay down early. All right. And we'll go. Right. 
All right, I need three comparators, a bunch of redstone dust, and a partridge in a pear tree. I didn't know they added those. Well, I mean, it's a chicken with a name tag, but, uh... Oh, oh, oh well. <laughs> that sounds like something you would build. Actually, now, now, now that it comes down to it, uh... <laughs> I, might, I just might do that. Need some redstone dust. Your randomizer. You put them in a box with a <laughs> couple of... Uh, yeah. Pressure, pressure plates and see which one he dances on. Alright, I need... So why am I doing this? If I finish this before you finish, they're gonna just start falling on your head. Alright, go ahead and work on it. <laughs> as long as they're dead, or at least mostly dead. Look at this. <laughs> All right, where is... Oh, wait, no, I need... Three... Six... Yeah, because I only need two comparators, not, uh... Why, why am I... All right, what am I forgetting? Okay. Spell. Compare... Oh, smooth stone, not cobble. Of course. And we're going to need two more torches. I'll just make a whole stack of torches. It's not like they'll go to waste. <laughs> don't, don't tempt me. going to come back out of that one out of that one no comparator there because that's our chain of last resort actually I should probably do that the other way around I'm probably going to put the unloading station somewhere over there or maybe over there. Yeah. We'll put the junk in that one. One, two. I hear a jibba. <laughs> yeah, no. I hear sad zombies who know that death is coming. Also, do you want me to bring some of this stuff back up to the storage unit? Some of what stuff? Um, all the stuff in the monster spawner, like there are a bunch of gold helmets and leather things and tons of rotten flesh. Yeah. Because I actually, like, weirdly happened to have a couple of random empty shulkers on me. How'd that happen? Dolman. Um, I was putting together the pillars before I did this. Ah. She, found, she caught me in a back alley and mugged me. That's what it was. Oh, dude, I would if I knew you had any. If I unload and come oh, That's across, right, you need shulkers, don't you? This way. I desperately need shulkers. I need all the shulkers. Yeah. And then I need a few more shulkers. A fistful of shulkers and a few shulkers more? Mm-hmm. Right, 
that was not the anticipated result. I haven't seen that in forever. What, a fistful of shulkers? Yeah, I know. Yeah, it, it was his greatest work. It was. It was. And some argue that the... Uh, that the... I had it and it escaped my mind. I was... <laughs> some argue a lot of things. Oh, good. Some argue about anything, especially on the internet. Oh, all the internet is an argument. <laughs> That's what we should call the internet in mass, an argument. <laughs> is that the uh, collective noun for, for the internet, an argument? Yes, that should totally be the collective noun for the internet, an argument. I thought it was the same thing that the trolls were. An argument of trolls. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Junk do we have handy? Tons of junk over at the base. Yeah, I'm just gonna grab some of the random zombie flesh we got over here. <laughs> Where did my anvil go? There we go. Did you use it up? No, I keep one on a box floating around here for, you know, just such an occasion. Um... So one of my llamas is glitchy and it won't make baby. You have an itchy llama that won't make babies? Glitchy llama. Gli oh, okay. It's a lot better than I remember I heard this song. first time. Oh, glitchy llama. No. no. Epic no. Well, that's why I'm taking lessons. It's about itchy llamas? No, I'm about singing. So I'll still make the same bad jokes. It'll just be in tune. <laughs> well, that's that's the whole point, right? Uh, in tune while you do it. Yeah. Do you have any item frames? If I yes. don't, I know there's leather over there. Okay. Like the uh, the already cooked furnace, because I think that's where. Yes. Oh, that's that's going to be the end. The junky one in the end, anyway. All right. Uh, hmm. Ooh. Do I want to do that though? Okay, so here's what I'm thinking, uh, and getting back to the the main educational theme, the way th the way these filters work is you've got a row of hoppers that feed nowhere, so items collect in them. The hopper below it is locked by this redstone torch under here, so that redstone torch is powering that block there, which is locking that hopper there, so nothing's going down. Hoppers pull across first and then down. It can't go across because there's nothing across for it to feed into. That's why we've got them facing that way instead of into something useful. That so we've got a comparator pulling the signal strength, which is based on the number of items in the hopper. So we've got these four slots being filled by something that has been renamed so no random items ever going to p collect in those slots and we've got the thing that we want to filter out in that last slot there so we got 41 sugar cane and then some randomly renamed stuff filling up the extra slot so when we get another row of hoppers going across the top of this that's going to be our input stream where the items from the farm are going to come down and it's going to go over this hopper if there's any gunpowder it's going to collect, 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 collect. And then once the signal strength gets just a little bit stronger, it's gonna end up powering this block. 
which this repeater is going to take the weak power from this block, put it full strength into this block, which will turn that torch off, which will unlock that hopper. And then the uh, gunpowder is going to start dropping from that hopper down into this one and into the boxes. Um, the second that that top filter drops back down to 41, that signal strength is going to drop, which is going to unpower the block, which is going to cause the torch to power up again, which will cause that block to power up again, locking the hopper, and it's just going to keep doing that over and over and over again. Um, which reminds me, I need more hoppers. This is pretty much the same deal that we've got over at... Seriously, it's night. Do you not see the sunset? Thank you. Um, this is pretty much what we got going over at the Guardian Farm over there, the system that we set up there. This, this is one of your bog standard redstone designs. Usually when you see people talking about item filters, they're talking about this or one of its very close variants. Impulse SV actually did a wonderful tutorial on five different variant filtering systems. Uh, this is one of the ones that you see in a lot of different storage designs and I didn't realize it until Impulse's video. This design works on both Bedrock and Java Edition. So depending on which version you play, uh, you should still be okay. I know, I know. Blah, blah, blah. Redstone. Right? <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to figure out what to do with excessive gold armor and how you turn it back into gold. You, you put it in a furnace. It gives you a nugget. But if you do that, I would put it on a grinding stone first to get the XP off it. Yeah. Oh, it doesn't have anything enchanted. It's just gold and armor. Well, in that case, just oh, cook yeah. it. Okay. Toss it into a furnace. I really want a furnace that looks from. like Mordor. Something something Mordor? Yeah, I want a furnace that looks like Mordor. Oh. <laughs> Start gutting the land and we'll build you a for furnace then. How about that? Where's your TNT kept? Where's my what? Your TNT? I have no idea what you're talking about. What? No wow. Why do you want to know? Because he said if I cleared a space, then I could have a furnace that looked like Mordor. Um. No. Uh. Why do I get the feeling that you that misunderstood not that what statement? I meant by that. <laughs> also, my fishy keep crowding in a really weird corner. Yes, they do. I noticed that too. Which, I mean, it's like kind of okay, because it's also right near where the rail is, so that's kind of cool. Yeah, so if you're coming in on the rail, you see them, but otherwise... <laughs> yeah. Alright, uh, so that gives me... We got three boxes for the uh, gunpowder. Three boxes for sugarcane, and then three boxes for everything else. Three double chest, sorry. Uh, the question is, is that going to be enough? No. Well... There Everything, no boys and girls. Because that... No more fish. Because on the one hand, this is only going to be loaded when somebody's over at the Guardian Farm. Not even then. I think I built it too far away for that. Are, are you kidding me? Yeah. Yeah. What, why, why are we still building it then? Because we can put a different AFK zone for it. I was thinking on the roof. But 
the whole point of this was that while you're over there repairing your stuff, you're getting more rocket fuel. I mean, that, 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 was, that was why you put this platform here. <laughs> that, that was the whole reason why you put this out here, was so that way you could be over there at the Guardian farm and, and load in this this dropper. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't work. <laughs> what do you mean it doesn't work? Have you counted the blocks? But I've never seen anything on there until I fly up here. So that means from down there, it's not active. And you have to remember where you're standing for the Guardian Farm mm -hmm. is at Bedrock, way over there. So, I mean, just height alone, we're probably well outside the sphere. I mean, but if we could we could build a AFK zone in the middle, and then you could get fish drops for the lava kill and this. <laughs> do 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 we seriously need to move it? Because where are emeralds now? What'd you say? Where are emeralds? Uh, over in Arcadius's project, where he's trading all the all my melons and pumpkins for emeralds for a profit no, share. No, because there's there there is a gentleman here who I can give him an emerald for eight sand. Um, you have no emeralds. Why would I have them? I never needed so, them. You have them at your base. <laughs> yeah, they're it's underground. Go to the go to the secret base and grab them. Can I put him in a box? Will he not move if I do that? He won't go from there uh, for what a day or two. Depends, and he might randomly despawn. Can I name him? No, no, he's he's he'll leave no matter what. I mean, you can no, name no, him, no but it's not going to change anything. You're just going to have to take a chance at running over there to get the emeralds and coming back quick enough. Because we need sand, don't we? We always need sand. Is paying an emerald for a a worth lot it? Of glass. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're talking about. And is an emerald worth eight? <laughs> things of sand <laughs> uh it's one of those if you have it it's good but i i don't i don't know that it's worth worth bothering with if you don't have it yeah okay I mean, we can How easily do I corral the third desert over from your house and get more so Did that fall into the system? I don't know. That fell right there. Okay. So now here's... Alright, so we've got our storage. That should be far enough outside of where anybody's likely to fall and die. Uh, I need to run the rail for the collection, but that's actually the easy part. The hard part is, how do I handle the the unloading system because that I've never built before so I need something up here that we run the cart to uh, hmm. and I want to make sure that we're not interfering with this redstone over here but I want to keep it a little more compact so, pretty sure 
And this is working off of a vaguely informed recollection. <laughs> All right, so I need power rail, regular rail. Gonna need a lot of power rail in a minute. Oh, good, sir. Do you have a trident? No. Of course not. We've only been doing this season since 1.13 was released. And not a bloody one of them has given up a trident. Bill system now. Get that volunteer out here to start manning the uh, trident boot. Yep. Yep, you could absolutely do that. Rail him over and uh, get him following well, the the biggest issue you. the whole time was trying to figure out how to get oh, with shit. the ice road in place, but now that the ice road's gone yeah. and we've put in the rail, you kind of miss how fast the ice road was, though. Not that fast. It was faster than the track is. How much gunpowder did I put in there? Alright, so the sugar cane went through the right place. And the rotten flesh went to the right place. Alright, at least there's that. Ooh. Did I build this too close? There's one of my torches. <laughs> yeah. I I'm getting stuff dropping here and there, which is kind of nice. Oh, did we want a separate box for string or no? I thought I was going to the overflow box. Okay, or the, no, 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 that's the fine. I just, box. I just, yeah. No, just, uh, just double checking. I mean, because you have the Arcadius Wool Emporium right around the corner if you need a straight. Yeah. Okay, and still at power zero, so that is going to power and depower based on that. This is going to power all the way up here, which. Not sure Are you already getting spawns down there? Yeah. Oh yeah. Nice. I'm getting the occasional thing dropping. I keep seeing what I think is the uh, sugar cane breaking off, but uh, maybe not. Oh, except when I walk off the platform. Uh, yeah, no, I'm seeing creepers fall and everything. Nice. Not even done yet. I thought I saw a sugar cane break off. Maybe I didn't. Because that, that is one of the concerns. Is I want to make sure that I got the glass in the right place and all that. It was just a creeper. Don't worry about it. Yep. 
anything green that I see out of the corner of my eye, I automatically just assume it's a creeper and run. Even if it's just tall grass or a plant or yeah, a tree. Yeah, or... no, no, no. I, I'm with you on that one. <laughs> I, I am very with you on that one. My suspicion even goes over into uh, Fallout 4 where <laughs> I, uh, I love the sensory um, component that you can put on your helmets. It basically highlights anything that is living in red. So if you have like the turrets or the zombies or ghouls, whatever they call them, or people, it, they're all highlighted red. So there's this particular spot where when you exit the Institute in the old CIT building and you can run straight across the bridge to the alley uh, settlement, which is what I've basically made my home since it's like right there. But uh, when you're running across that bridge, there's a hole in the bridge that you can see the, the ground underneath it as you're approaching the other shore. And right there in that hole, there is also a red uh, car. So every time I come across that bridge, every single time, I stop my sprint, crouch, and aim my gun at this car. Oh, <laughs> You would think after like the 50th time I, I'd realize, you know, there's a car down there. And I've never run into a random patrol there, so I'm, I'm not sure why I still jump at that every time. I don't even think there's a random opportunity spawn point there, to be honest. Really? Mm -mm. You would think so. Huh. It's a huge uh, conjunction spot for a lot of stuff, but I have never once seen a random spawn there. I run into my fair share of random spawns lately, but not there. There are some fun ones. I don't know how many you've run into in the past, but there's actually this guy called Mantis Man. <laughs> yeah, I haven't run into that. Oh, he's hilarious. He thinks he's a superhero. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. Uh, I had... He doesn't have very much dialogue for just the regular soul survivor or character. But if you happen to be wearing the... Because I had to look it up because I was curious about him. Because oh. uh, someone with a name like that, you would figure they'd have more dialogue than that. But um, if by chance you're wearing the Silver Shroud costume when you run into him, he's got like an entire dialogue tree for you. <laughs> nice. Yeah, talks about uh, you know, teaming up or something. I don't... Like I said, I didn't have the costume on me, so I couldn't do that interaction. But when I looked it up later, I found out you could do that. <laughs> uh, as many hours as I have in the game, I'll probably never see him again, though. <laughs> He's pretty rare, apparently. Okay. But... Okay. That is 10 out from all corners. I don't know if that's enough. Uh, oh, given the spider that just fell to his death... I mean, that means some of it's good, but is all of it good? Like, how far out do uh, I need well, this thing? Get onto the, uh, get onto the bottommost platform and <laughs> check the light levels. Yeah, no, I don't think I want to. <laughs> hey, you I'm want to know? <laughs> you're you're the one who wants to know. Inquiring minds and all that. Yeah, no, not, I'm not that curious. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, fine. See how I can, uh, good I can fly at this. Alright, uh. That's a miss. Actually. Let's break that. Gonna lose that. Let's break that. Gonna lose that. Those should have ended up here. Yes, there we go. Let's go there. Well, the very edge has a light seven all the way around, but that's the only spot. Okay. And as far as sky, it's a three is the highest. It... Actually, there's a four sky here. Hmm. 
How am I getting a light 4 from Sky, but a 7 from Block? What do we have around here that's lighting this up? Um, it could be light from the sugarcane farm. Oh, that's right. That's what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Well, it's only the, the bottom layer losing the very outer ring. I don't think that's going to be enough to really hamper anything. No, not, not that much, because at the bottom level you're getting, what, only uh, a couple of blocks of seven? Oh, not wow. even that much. Yeah, but the entire top level is considered a uh, Sky 15. Even though it's covered. Um, That's a weird little glitch. That shouldn't be You're talking about the top Sorry. level where the redstone is, or the top level of where no, the top spawnable. Are yeah, top spawnable. That's showing light level 15 all across the board? Yeah, 15 sky. The block is um, a 10 or 7, 5, 4, 3, whatever, but... I mean, even that doesn't seem accurate. How it has a has an eight on here, I don't know. But it's showing fifteen sky all the way across. Uh, I'm wondering if I if we're seeing that bug that uh, a couple of people have been experiencing with weird light levels. I'll have to look into that. Hmm. My first ring block go. All right. Oh no, are the light bugs back? Uh, yes, but not those light bugs. Different ones. We have new ones now. <laughs> I don't like bugs. Well, yes, that is a well-known fact. Uh. Hmm. So that rail is not depowering those hoppers. Sure. Okay, those are going through. Oh, there's my block. And we've got nothing in there yet because we haven't accumulated enough gunpowder. We got some sugar cane in there. And these guys are beautiful. I mean, stuff is stuff is dropping on us. Literally. No, that's why I was waiting to see if anything fell. Alright, so... I know the cart needs to roll up onto here, and I need to hold it on one of these two hoppers. Um, I can probably technically move this back a block, but I'm not sure that I necessarily want to. I think I need to have that angled up, though, for some reason. Because I know most of these unloading systems that I've seen, that is, that is the case. Um... And what do I need? I need I need to know when a full cart is there to extend that piston. And when an empty cart is gone to retract it. Or am I measuring the cart? I think I am. All right, let's try it. Let's go off the ledge. There we go. Um, hmm. I don't know. Maybe I did have that right the first time. All right. So I could. Oh, wrong way. If I 
put it this way. That's going to pull the signal from here. Which I can then put there. I'm going to keep this all neat and tidy as I go. Uh, could it be that simple? Well, it could always be that simple. <laughs> Is it that simple? Because <laughs> sometimes I have found that the answer to your problems is so stupidly simple. You know, you get those moments where you, you look at it and you go, of course I was overthinking it. Duh. that if I'm unloading items into there that's not not pushing that out why is that not pushing that out what if I did that okay um, that sort of worked right, nothing's getting into the wrong place at least Redstone dust. We try powering a block. I would like to know where that redstone dust went, though. Uh, let's load up some more. There we go. I do like that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if I've mentioned it, but I really, really do like that everything floats eventually. <laughs> Just the, the number, the, the number of things that that have uh, that have really needed to float back up. I, I remember the old days when I would accidentally drop a pickaxe and I'd have to go hunt around the bottom of the ocean yeah. floor trying to figure out where I dropped it. Yeah. What happened yesterday? <laughs> Not yesterday. Alright, that's... Feels like it. That's half working. Or maybe I have this one block too low? And I should be measuring the cart? Because that breaks off the, uh... That, that keeps breaking off the rail on me. So... Maybe I do have that one, one step too low. And we'll go that way, we'll go that way. And we'll get this set back up. for a sticky piston because we really can't wait for that one to float back up. Build the drowned. Uh, Did you just say build a drowned? Like a no, creepy version a of build a bear? No. Oh. <laughs> no. No, no, no. No, no build a bear. No build a drown. Well, I'm going to keep collecting <laughs> gunpowder. <laughs> Because I need items to feed through there to make sure that this is that I'm not breaking things before I start throwing a minecart onto this and continuing this madness. All right, uh, so I need a sticky piston. Who's gonna feed that block there? at the fence post there. So now, if I 
feed some items into the chain. Oh, duh, because that should be measuring the cart, not that. Uh, which means that I probably don't need that hopper there. I could probably move this whole thing back one step. Okay, so I'll need that block there. I'll need that block there. I'll need to pull that block out and that block. Thinking out loud with an on junior. <laughs> Sometimes it helps. I would just like to know if anyone realizes exactly how long it is going to take to do the pillars for this rail system. Uh, it's going to take a while. But I, I, I seem to recall that that is somebody else's problem. <laughs> oh, that kind of attitude. I know whose problem it will be. There are chickens where that came from. Oh, oh do, do you want to get into a chicken war? Because uh, I do have the egg farm. Yeah, but I know where it is. It, that, that doesn't mean I don't have a stockpile somewhere. That also doesn't mean I'm not above building another chicken farm right over. Is that going to be our server, just like a series of chicken farms? <laughs> well, I don't think anybody would starve that way. No. <laughs> no, no, not even a little bit. Alright, I need a hopper minecart. Hopper. Uh, do you have a minecart? No. I know you don't. Why am I looking? You don't. I know you don't. Why am I looking? Um, hmm. Okay. some stuff that we're going to filter and some stuff that we're not going to filter. Grab some sugar cane. Oh! <laughs> Hello, skeletons. Just when I needed something that uh, to toss in there. Beautiful. The timing is wonderful. I love how you say hello, skeletons, at the same time I turn around and see th withers. Oh. Withers, skeletons, I should say. laughing at. Well, I'm trying to figure if I can figure this out without running to somebody's tutorial. Oh. That doesn't explain why Giggles is laughing. Because Giggles is always laughing. Oh, okay. Sometimes he's laughing with me, sometimes he's laughing at me. Have you still never lit up the rest of your place? Has who still never lit up the rest of which base? Well, which of the two of us have ever had an unlit place? Oh, I don't know if Arcadius has lit up the rest of his place or not. It does not appear so. Why? This is all half slab. Nothing can spawn in here. Uh, not outside of here. Oh, outside? No, you don't go outside. No, n no one ever goes outside. <laughs> Ooh. <okay. laughs> so... I need a stone cutter. Where's that? I don't have one. 
Go fish. I am. All through his storage unit. Hmm. You should have something you wanted at your feet. Actually, it's in your hand <gasps> right now. But there are only 27 of them. That's all I have. That, that is everything I have. Where's where's number 28? What happened? Okay. I um, don't know. Hmm. I either didn't retrieve it or the shulker didn't drop to it. That's sad. All right, this progress of a sort. Thank you, though. You're welcome. Like I said, I, I had them. I just. I need stone cutting right. implementations, though. Yeah, I don't have one here. I have one over at my underground base. Where's that? Oh, have you not been there? Oh, I'll show you. Here you I see there is no more unethical farming happening down here. I'm happy about that. Oh, jeez. What, what, I'll meet you in the courtyard, and I'll take you to the other base. How far away is it? It's right around the corner, actually. Right. Around the corner from what, the nether? Right here. Right outside. Come on. You ready to fly? Um, I have ten rockets. That's you only need like two. Okay. Alright. Oh, maybe you need more than two. I hear the I hear the furious clicking. <laughs> I don't know where you went. I'm right here. Oh. See? Right over the mountain. Where yeah, the you said that letter before. S slash number two is? Um, it's a snake, or supposed to be, I don't know. Oh, yeah, I totally got that. Yeah, no, I'm gonna have to tear it down and try it again. New statue. How'd you get two opposing bubble elevators to be next to each other? Um, carefully. Yeah. That's cool. Yep. <sighs> Alright, uh... I may have to look up the tutorial on that one. Oh, is Doggone. this where your purple farm is? Is this where the what? Purple farm. There's a small chance that he might have been using your purple farm? No, that is a purple farm. The glass looks weird. Well, you won't be able to see that once we're done, because you'll take up all the uh, torches. And then this is just going to look like a void down here. Cool. Like, you can see partly what it's going to look like if you look in this corner over here, but... I'm surprised you didn't want to, like, toss a couple of magma blocks down there in some of the nooks and crannies. Well, that's a cool idea. The actual idea was to make it void, like... This is actually supposed to be, quote-unquote, in the... The nether. Or the ah. end. I was actually going to build floating islands for each of the houses and all that stuff. Hmm, okay. This is all the, the current storage here, and that over there is the the trading zone where I've captured myself a villager. How does one mean captured? Well, he was, oh. used to be a zombie, and I had to rescued, change him back. He rescued the villager. Oh, and why do you have rubies? Hmm? Why do you have rubies? There are no rubies. He does. R U B Y gems. A ruby. Yeah, no, I've got two. I got them in a treasure chest. You can have them if you want them. Oh, oh, that's right. I forgot that we added the uh, the gem pack. Mm hmm. All right. Uh, I guess my problem <laughs> is the the hopper minecart is coming up the rail. And this is triggering, but we're not getting the piston to extend. Um, I thought that would holding? power the block. Hmm? What are you holding? That's a rocket. 
No, your shield of sushi? Oh. Rice? It's a rice bowl, yeah. <laughs> don't, why, why do you ask questions you don't really want the answer to? Why didn't you use black concrete to make it all dark and foreboding? It's back here. Where? Going through and putting it in into the walls here to get rid of the random glowing white or stone colors that, that are going to be showing up there. So did you want this to have the visual depth where you can see through it or... Um, it's supposed to be a, a blacking effect, like a, but I think there's supposed to be like a whole nother layer of glass above this one to make it actually work. I, I just need to figure that part out. Ah. I take it it's not ready to be shown on stream yet. Oops. No, you can go ahead. The walls are done. I mean, that's, that was the biggest concern was making sure it just didn't okay. look like a big old stone box. Here, take this. Out of space. Uh, hmm. You can just let that stuff despawn. We have so much of it. <gasps> <gasps> what? Nothing. I'm walking away. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> There's a stone cutter right here. <laughs> Come oh, here. Oh, you're looking for a stone, stone cutter. cutter. Stone cutter. Pay, pay attention to the stone cutter. Right? Yep. Right? Is that it? <laughs> yep. There's a stone cutter right there. And a grindstone if you need it. And an anvil. And a furnace. And another. Okay. I gotta go. Bye. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the other person who doesn't like to throw anything away. <laughs> I was gonna offer to help. I would much appreciate it. This is a huge No, project. not if you're throwing away resources. You get mad because I've almost filled an entire double chest of shulkers. No, I get mad when you leave it. shit on my floor. Hey, you like hey, hey, my friend language. Family up. friendly. <laughs> Alright, I need to play Captain America. Language. Why <laughs> <laughs> He needs to not get me so upset. Don't say blast to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Hey, come here, I want to trade with you. Oh, you haven't seen this mechanic here. I don't want to look at any of your mechanics right now. Hold one of those in front of the villager. Watch what he does. Oh, yeah, he shows what he's uh, willing to trade for whatever you have in your hand. That's hilarious. I'm not even seeing this thing right up. <laughs> Is six pumpkins for an emerald a good trade? Uh, it's okay. The four melons is an awesome trade, but that's what... Okay. Locking a mountain, then he'll right. unlock about halfway through the day, and you can do it again. Right. I just think it's funny when you trade with him, you'll end up with an emerald in your hand, and he'll show you like a pumpkin pie or a cake. Hmm. Really funny. And then you what, just drop all that stuff on the floor? Uh, no, you should have picked that up and put it back in one of these boxes. Yeah, well, I threw it. That's nah, okay. Because apparently that's what we do here. Throw stuff? Right. Yeah, no. There we go. Wow. There we go. All fixed. Because uh, apparently we just throw stuff away. Mm-hmm. Wait, are you just running off with those emeralds? Hmm? What? <laughs> I'm sorry. I, you were just going to throw them away, so I figured it didn't no. matter. See, there, there's a difference here. That is stone. Those are emeralds. <laughs> we, we can throw it stone. It all matters. It is all resources that you will pay Every for later to get. Every block is precious. Didn't, didn't you see the Monty Python bit? Really? Really? <laughs> Every, every block oh, is precious. All right. uh -huh. hmm. I can't believe you let things despawn. <laughs> and I married you. What would you think of the art, though? All right. So if 
I do this, that. that. How do you get back from your litter S base? Hmm? Hmm? How do you get back from the letter S base? This, this way. Boom. You here. I'm pretty sure. Also, henceforth, be... that is what it is to be known as. Um, the yes, S down. It'll, it'll get torn mm -hmm. down. <laughs> I thought it was pretty clear that it was a snake. Hey, there's a pair of llamas here. Oh, there's a oh, ton I have of emeralds floating around. Nope, nope. There's a wandering trader here. Hey, buddy, what you got? Stuff. Stuff and things. Ooh. He has coral and blue ice. Wait, he sells blue ice? Yeah, he's got blue ice for sale. Ooh. That is a... That is tempting. Okay. Blue ice That's is not progress. fun to play to get your hands on. Okay, so that didn't stop it. Why did that not stop it? Alright. Do I even need that block up there? I don't I don't remember seeing them have that. <laughs> okay, that didn't work out quite so well. When are you gonna finish the map? Well, this is the issue is I thought that base was close enough. Because here's the other base I just made. You can see that I actually put a banner on it right there. It says underground base. Okay. Underground city right there at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Problem is, it goes one step above this one. <laughs> yeah, your instructions were to get this side. Yeah, yeah. That too. Alright, um... Maps it don't look here. like you're just gonna have to rebuild the base elsewhere. Oh no, I'm not. <laughs> you have right. Any idea how long that took? I know I've been kind of quiet on the stream. There you go. I'm struggling to think out loud. Uh, we've got the storage sorted. We've got the filtering system sorted. I just can't seem to get this minecart unloading system unsorted. I got the general idea. You want the cart to be able to run up the rail. You want it to stop when it gets here and unload it. I thought the idea was to have this extend out a fence post and catch the cart while it's up here, but for whatever reason it's extending, it's not it's not moving fast enough, I think. Because it looks like that is extending out after that is returning, and I don't know if maybe the problem is I need to depower the rail while I'm at it which is a very distinct possibility as well. Uh, so I'm going to go look at how some of this unloading stuff works between now and next week, and I will show you what we're doing over at Arcadius's second base next week, because hopefully we should have most of what we're working on there finished, uh, or at least closer to finished. And uh, with Maybe all that... Maybe by then I'll have 13% of the pillars done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we uh, we definitely showed off the aquarium. The aquarium's looking good. The inside of the rail station's looking good. We we've been working on some projects. We got some long term projects going. The mountains getting closer to being done, at least on the front side, the right the side that the uh, rail passes. And uh, I'll have to get the side by the lake next after I finish the front side. Um, so we got a few long term ish or medium-term-ish grindy projects. Uh, next week, I hope to be able to finish up that unloading system. I'd like to show it on air, so that way we can go over how the redstone works, and then we can start moving on from there. But um, in the meantime, I hope to see you all next week. We do this live on twitch.tv. Link is down in the description, and if it's not, you can get to it from anonjunior.com. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. That's perfect timing. Sugarcane falling right in my hand. Beautiful. 
Um, Tuesdays, 6 p.m. U.S. Eastern. That is minus 4 UTC, I think it still is. I forget when the rest of the world goes to daylight saving time because, you know, it's kind of crazy like that. And we took the week off last week, so starting this Thursday, we're back to Games Revisited, so we're picking up Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. We're on Tatooine, getting ready to traverse the vast desert and hopefully pick up another minion. Um, depends on if I can go gamble up some funds or something, because I, I think I'm a little short on cash for that guy. Uh, <laughs> and as we've seen in previous episodes... My charisma is not that high, so negotiating a better price is probably going to be a little difficult, to say the least. And on Fridays, I play World of Tanks with a couple of friends. We jokingly call ourselves the 47%. Okay, I jokingly call us the 47% because we uh, we make the top half possible. Try, <laughs> trying to put a little bit of the... Uh, uh, show you how to have a fun time as a casual player so you don't have to be quite so for serious about it as a great many people tend to take it. And video archives of all the live streams are up on the YouTube channel. Link should be down in the bottom. If not, well, you're either watching it on YouTube or you can get to the link. I know the link is on the Twitch page and the Mixer page. Um, Hopefully, in the very near future, I'll be producing some episodes, putting together some Redstone how-tos. I've got a lot of stuff in planning, but no ETA at this particular juncture, or at least at the time of this recording. So, um, and hopefully by next week, I'll have this set up, so that way, if you want to help support our endeavors on the coffee craft server you can donate tip whichever whichever word strikes your fancy and all that sort of stuff and uh with all that said and done have fun 